What's the fastest way to master NLP? Keep watching. This is Life Mastery Jim. I'm Damon Card, and I teach people just like you cutting edge NLP processes and techniques so that you can master your life and take charge of your destiny. So if that sounds good, make sure you click that subscribe button right down here so you can get these videos on a regular basis. By the end of this video, you're going to have a process for mastering NLP processes rapidly. I've been practicing NLP for eight years and for a long time, I was kind of lost. I went to a lot of NLP trainings, but I didn't have a lot of good understanding about how to practice when I wasn't in the trainings. And so I had to cultivate some of my own ways of practice, which I'm going to share with you today. As always, if you have questions or you have comments, please put them right down here in the comment section down below and I will respond to you. What I'm gonna show you is a way to strategize your practice, to make it systematic and to do it in steps that you can track, you can go back to and repeat several times until you get to the level of mastery that you wanna get in NLP. And at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a way to sort of tie it all together with a free assessment. And if you are impatient and you wanna know what this assessment is about before this video is over, in the description below, you will find a link. Just click on that link and it will take you to a website where you can uh, take part in that assessment and in some research for free. So really what I'm gonna show you is based on perceptual positions. If you don't know what perceptual positions is, I'll link a video to this one where I show you um, how to do that process with perceptual positions. Usually perceptual positions is its own process, but we can also use it for learning rapidly. So if you are using YouTube videos to learn processes, NLP processes, or if you have a home study course, an online course where you're studying, this is perfect. So what you want to do is when you watch someone else, watch a teacher or an instructor do an NLP process, you first want to do just that. Just observe. Don't try to understand it. Don't try to figure it out. Just observe. So you, if you're watching uh, this on YouTube or you're watching a process on YouTube or you're watching in your home study course, just watch the, the demonstration, like I said, without trying to figure it out and watch it a second time where you don't look at the screen and you just listen. So you wanna separate, but also include, eventually bring all the senses together, but you wanna separate them and do them one at a time. So you go one pass just watching it, and then you do an, a second pass just listening to the instructor or teacher do the, the process with someone. Then you're gonna practice it on yourself. Not enough people do this in NLP. A lot of times people skip the process of proficiency with using NLP on yourself. Some people are just the opposite. They only use NLP on them on themselves and not other people. Total NLP proficiency is the ability to do NLP effectively on yourself and to do it effectively with other people. And it doesn't matter what you're, what you're wanting to use it for, you wanna do both of these. So do the process by yourself, on yourself. And just notice what you get out of that. You might not get anything the first time. Lots of people do NLP techniques once or they do a process once and they go, oh, that didn't work. And then they, they, they either think NLP doesn't work or they jump to the next technique or process. It usually doesn't work the first time because it takes practice. So you're gonna do that once with yourself. Then you're gonna find a practice partner. You have to find a practice partner. You don't have to be in their presence. You could do it over Skype or Zoom, whatever. You can do it over video, it doesn't matter. So you do the process with the other person. And then, this is very, very important, have that person or have someone do the process with you. The way to truly understand NLP processes and techniques and, and how they are effective is you have to experience it yourself. So maybe the person that you're practicing with doesn't isn't interested in NLP and that's fine. And you definitely wanna practice with people who don't know NLP because it's different practicing with people who don't know NLP versus people who do, or people who are studying just like you. It's good to have both. You probably will find it easier to find someone who's also practicing NLP to practice with you. It might be a little bit harder to find someone who isn't interested in NLP, but there are people who are interested in getting free coaching. And that's the way that I would frame it. If you're looking for a practice partner, 
who isn't interested in learning NLP, basically just tell them it's free coaching, but you're practicing, you know, let them know that you're actually practicing a process, not that you're offering them full on coaching. But I would frame it that way to make it more interesting to them. Lots of people would love free coaching. And so that's basically what you're doing. So you want to experience the process doing it with someone else. And it's okay if you have to have notes to look at or if you have you have the process written down. Don't think that you have to memorize it first before you do the process. You can go step by step. And that's the way I first started practicing. I had my manual in front of me and I, I went that way. Now, an important tip when you're doing this, when you're doing a process with someone and you're having to read from a manual or from your notes, make sure that your face is not buried in the notes the whole time. Because a big part of NLP is sensory acuity and calibration. You need to be observing the shifts and the changes with the person you're working with. So how do you do this? Well, you look at your manual, your notes, whatever it is you're reading from, read the line that you need to do next or whatever the step is, and then look at the person and say whatever it is that you need to say to them. What too many people do is they read straight from their book and they never look up. And that's not, you're, you're missing out on a huge part of NLP. You're missing out on how their response to it. And their response to it is not their words. What you're looking for is the nonverbal response to, to what uh, happens next, whatever their nonverbal response is, because that's a truer, more honest expression of what they're experiencing than their words could ever be. So you look down, you memorize the next step, just the next one, look up, say whatever it is you need to say to complete that step, see the response, then go back to your book, manual or notes, and then see the next step and then do that. That's the best way to do it. And again, you wanna have somebody practice the process on you. And then if you, and then if you can, if you have two practice partners, you want to sit back and observe someone else doing it. So if you notice, if you know perceptual positions, what are we doing here? I'm experiencing the process in first person. I'm experiencing it as second position, so the other. And then I'm experiencing in third position, observer. And when you're doing all of these positions, you're really getting the technique and process into your muscle so that it becomes second nature to you. Think about how you started out. You first were just observing someone who does it well, an instructor, a teacher, someone who has mastered this already. Then you listen to it, then you practice it on yourself, you practice it with someone else, you let that person practice on you, and then if you can, you observe two people practicing. Now, once you've done all this, you will have a much greater understanding of this technique and this process. What a lot of people do is they just watch an instructor do it, and maybe they try it once and they think, okay, that's good enough. No, it is not. You will never really learn NLP that way. You certainly won't even come close to mastering it. So when you actually get into the process and are doing it, receiving it, observing it, this is making it real for you. Now, once you've done that, where you've done the practice with someone else, you want to go back to your instructional video, whether that's on YouTube or a home study course, and watch again the instructor do the process with the demonstration subject. And I assure you, you're gonna, you're gonna understand what's going on so much more. It's sort of like learning a language. You'll, you'll be able to understand why the teacher does what the teacher does so much better. And that's still not the end of it. You can repeat this process several times and I would recommend that you do. You observe, you observe someone who does it well. You try it on yourself, you practice it with partners, then you come back to observation. And if you do this several times, like say between three times at the very minimum and seven times, like if you do this seven times, you're gonna have this mastered. The reason this works so well is that NLP is a, an experiential model. You cannot get it just by memorization. You have to experience it and you have to experience it from different perspectives. That's why we use the perceptual positions. A big mistake a lot of NLP students make or people who are just dabbling in NLP on, you know, watching YouTube videos is they're more interested in just learning a bunch of techniques, but it, it doesn't matter if you learn a bunch of techniques and you don't really master them, you won't be good at any of them. It will be haphazard or the results will be haphazard when you try to do them. So in a way you're wasting a lot of time, but that's what people think. They think the magic is in the wand and no, the magic is in you. It's in your ability to cultivate this skill and the understanding of why the process works that is far more powerful than, than trying to memorize a bunch of uh, techniques. 
Bruce Lee, who's behind me right here, I don't know why you can see him, uh, used to say, I don't fear a man who knows 1,000 different kicks. He says, I fear the man who has practiced one kick 1,000 times. And that's what we're doing here. If you have a, if you have a vague understanding of 10 NLP processes and te or techniques, that's nothing, that, that is not effective. It's not nearly effective, as effective as mastering one NLP process or one NLP technique. Some people build entire coaching practices off of really mastering one NLP process. And you can totally do that because if you're getting the results, that's what it's all about is getting the result. So if you wanna create a vision, not just for mastering NLP, but really mastering your life, and you wanna be able to transform yourself, which is what NLP is all about, and you wanna be able to hit the goals that you have, which again, is probably why you wanna learn NLP to begin with. It starts with assessing where you are. So to do that, go to the description right here down below. You will find the link, just click on that link. It will take you to a page where you can do a free assessment. You basically answer some questions and then we put it, all the information together for you and then give you that assessment for free. So make sure you take advantage of that. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe by hitting that subscribe button and clicking the bell so that you'll be notified when I put new videos out. As always, if you found this video helpful, make sure you share it with a friend or a family member who you think could benefit from it as well. Take care.